Superman Legacy cast adds Isabel Merced. Not trying that name. And then in Nathan Fillion, who is also in very, like, I think all of the Guardians movies that James Gunn has made. He's played some random character. I know he's, he's played that, like, giant blue guy um, from the first movie that, that Groot stuck his fucking roots up his nose. Oh. And then in, uh, I'm not sure what he played in Guardians 2, but in Guardians 3, he played that, uh, one of those, um,. <laughs> Dark and that fleshy yeah. planet thing or yeah. lab or whatever. So they're playing these three characters. So Isabella Merced's playing Hot Girl, uh, Eddie, or Eda. I don't know how to say that guy's name, Eddie. Um, he's yeah. playing uh, Mr. Terrific. And then Nathan Fielding's playing a Green Lantern instead of how Jordan is going to be a uh, Guy Gardner. Hmm. Very interesting. To me, so this is confirmed that these three are going to be in Superman Legacy. This right. doesn't. Okay, so that's them not saying, hey, in James Gunn's universe, these guys are going to be uh, characters in his universe, right? Right. Okay. So here's the part where uh, it worries me a little bit that now that's happening. DC already doesn't have a good track writer for adding in multiple characters. All right. But for it being James Gunn doing it, James Gunn, his track record for adding in multiple characters, the movie still comes out good. Mm-hmm. So I'm a little bit on the fence about this because uh, a Green Lantern, we haven't gotten a live action Green Lantern in uh, the Snyderverse. You can count the flashback of. Um, who is explaining uh, the war between Darkseid and the Amazons and all them? I think it was. I have no idea. I mean, it was probably Wonder Woman. It was probably Wonder Woman explaining that, and we got to see a we got to see the Green Lantern core in there, but we never got a Green Lantern in Snyder's universe. Now we have Green Lantern in Snyder's universe, but should he have just gotten his own movie rather than just showing up in the Superman? movie so i know they're still getting a green lantern core movie so they're probably s- introducing one to then introduce more later mm, so you're saying he's going to be in there as like the stepping stone for that pretty much okay um i feel like it's not really gonna play too much into the, the story with these characters i know that um James gonna say it's gonna be like a coming of age type of Superman movie, and mm-hmm. that you know he's he's coming up in a uh, in a world that's already full of superheroes, so it kind of makes sense to at least introduce some, even if mm. like they're not like super big or anything. Um, I mean, like I said, just introducing some would make sense in that world because Man of Steel only kind of like referenced itself really like there was no other heroes up until they kind of like retconned it later on with uh batman versus superman with bruce wayne you know being at in metropolis uh and then in the recent flash movie where he was also in metropolis uh he like saved like one kid or whatever but it's Mm -hmm. like all these all these uh super people existed and they didn't establish that up until uh, Batman vs Superman, when when Batman was kind of look looking into all these files of all these super people, all right. So I mean, to at least have like a, some like even if they're just there for like cameo or you know like a little bit of help for Superman, or you know whatever it is, uh, I think it makes sense. Like as as long as they're not like too much into the story, which isn't that big of a deal either because James Gunn doesn't have really that bad of a track record for introducing multiple characters and fleshing them out and making them all you know um, lovable in their own right and then not making all of them have the same amount of spotlight you know what I mean Right. well at least for like Guardians he's made you know each character 
have like just equal as amount much, of screen time. Yeah. Yeah. Equal amount of screen time. Equal amount of uh, importance in, in the story. Um, mm-hmm. But as far as for Superman, I know it's a big deal because, you know, the movie has to be about Superman. Yeah, and it's called yeah. Superman Legacy. <laughs> yeah. But no, you know, I I don't find really this to be that too big of a deal. I mean, it, like I said, it just established that there's other heroes in this universe. I think it's just the whole me knowing how DC was uh, previous to all this. Now I still have to get it around my head that this is under a whole new team. This is under a whole new director. This is under a whole new idea. But it's just that, like, it's almost like that trauma you have where it's like DC arguably has better stories than a lot of Marvel characters' uh, backstories. All right. Mm. And DC also is darker than Marvel, so it's more for people our age and the adult crowd. So it's like we want to see stuff like that. And we don't want to see, like, the happy-go-lucky you know things so for us not being able to get that or at least get these projects that came out really lackluster and some of them really really awful it's almost just like seeing him add all these characters just worries me a little bit like i said batman versus superman is a prime example for dc trying to add in multiple characters and they effed up and same thing with the flash not as bad as batman vs superman still added in multiple characters it was a mediocre story but obviously there was outside sources around it that... it all comes down to the writing as well it just depends on how they handle each character and if they actually just serve a purpose or they're, they're just there to be there um mm. batman vs superman i feel like it it was okay up until a certain point like, what would you say? Like, um, like Diana being there, I feel like she didn't need to be there for the fight necessarily. I mean, it does, it would kind of raise questions as to like, you know, where was Wonder Woman all this time? You know, she was there earlier at the little museum or whatever that mm-hmm. they were at, or the the gala. Um, so, you know, her just having that little role, I feel like would have been fine. Again, mm-hmm. I don't feel like she needed to be in that fight. Um, mm-hmm. I don't also don't think feel like Doomsday should have been there. Um, yeah, there's I mean there's a lot wrong with that movie. I'm not gonna get into it. It's not what this is about. Um, no. <laughs> but, yeah, it it just like I said, it just depends on the writing and how they treat each character. I feel like James Gunn has really done that well with the Suicide Squad and Guardians. You know, kind of like making each character. Uh, Peacemaker too, right? Right. Or he did. Peacemaker, yeah, yeah. The, the TV series, yeah. Yeah, he's done really good. I mean, he does give us really high hopes for DC's future, and that's what I have to. That me personally, I have to realize that. But it's just like, man, just DC messing up in the past just really makes it a little bit hard for us to trust you know the next movie being good you know what i mean because out of the whole dc movies that we've gotten which one which one was the best one it was the one that just didn't hit theaters and that was the snyder cut Mm -hmm. it was the only one and what they've dropped like eight or nine movies probably 10 movies i mean he's at least he he brings in the uh, comic accurate looks as well when it comes to his characters because in the Suicide Squad everybody kind of looks you know kind of like their uh, comic book counterparts uh-huh. um, I mean he even got Pokemon, Polka Dot Man to look as goofy as he does in the comics but it's like it works so, like it doesn't look bad <laughs> Pokemon like, <it's> Man <laughs> Pokemon Man <laughs> yeah the Polka Dot Man um, like it doesn't look too corny or goofy like it fits uh into the like the, the source the material yeah he really uh sticks to the source material yeah. like and that would have been perfect too and everything so i can only imagine how superman and the rest of his dc universe is gonna look uh him and henry cavill would have been were great together because you know henry cavill is about sticking to the source material 
Yeah. Oh man, it would have been nice yeah. just to keep him. But I mean, um, David Cornsweet sounds like he's, you know, pretty dedicated to Superman even way before he got casted. Because I know he was saying something about, you know, he would love to play Superman, and if he did, he would really want to stick to something that's true to Superman. Yeah. So. I think the more that um, we get closer to David Cornsweet hitting the big screen for the damn near the most popular superhero of, of all time. I think people are really accepting into having him as Superman. You know, it's now got that look, you got that like it's like promising to see some yeah, to see somebody like that. Now I, I was expecting him to get a lot of hate cuz it's like damn, you know, Henry Cavill said that he was going to return as Superman, then obviously this happens and they have to recast Superman and I was on. I I almost was kind of on the hater train where I was like, man, the next person who plays Superman is going to be trash. You know, already having that stuff in my mind. And you know how the people are um, when it comes to them already knowing somebody to play this character. Then all of a sudden, that's taken away from them. And then they have to drop in a new guy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like we're eventually going to get another Wolverine, right? Hugh Jackman's not going to play Wolverine forever. And it's going to be really, really, really big shoes to fill in for the next person that hops into that suit. Yeah. So it's it was almost kind of like the same thing for David Cornswell a little bit. Everybody loved Henry Cavill as Superman. But the fact that he's not there anymore and David Cornswell is stepping in, you kind of look at everything that David Cornswell has to offer with the look, um, him being dedicated to the character, he kind of brings a little bit more promise, and I think um, he's one of the very few actors that you know replaced the previous actor. And you're kind of just like, I'm actually excited for this. This video is brought to you by CPR Ninjas. If you live in the Central Florida area, then this is the place for you to get CPR certified. At CPR Ninjas, their passion is to provide you with knowledge and skills needed to perform high-quality CPR with accuracy and precision. Javon and Lissandra Washington have been working in the healthcare industry since the mid-1990s and share 35 plus years combined in healthcare. Javon and Lissandra are both registered nurses with diverse backgrounds, which include home care, hospital care, acute care, wound care, hospice care, pediatrics, research, and higher learning education. Together, they share a passion to reach the community provide education that will save lives and improve quality of life. As American Health Association instructors, they also share the same vision with the AHA to building a healthier tomorrow. If you want to get started on a course today, go ahead and email Javon at CPRNinjas.com or if you want to call, it's 813-603-6898. Now back to our video. 